Quantum computers claim to be faster than classical computers, but have quantum computers actually been proven to have a speed up over classical ones? It wasn't clear until in 1994, Shor created Shor's algorithm which had a significant speed up over classical computers. Now, in this video, I'm going to be focusing on Grover's algorithm, which, is, which was invented in 1996 by Law of Grover. It's a database search algorithm, and the speedup is quadratic, and while it's not as dramatic as Short's algorithm, it still has insane implications. One obvious application is a search of an unstructured database, which is what this algorithm was originally intended for. This is useful when you have large amounts of unordered data coming in and you need to find items in this. This algorithm will be potentially useful when the internet of things gets bigger, and the whole world has more and more data coming in. To sum it up, any problem that can be solved by a random brute force search can take advantage of the quadratic speedup that this algorithm provides. So let's move on to the first part of the algorithm. So at first, I'm going to really quickly start with the basics. So a bit is a 0 and a 1, while a qubit is either a 0 or a 1, represented by a column matrix, or somewhere in between. And that matrix, the Hadamard matrix you see, puts the state of the qubit into a superposition. That is, that funky number, that, that, that middle line. So this Hadamard matrix is basically the first part of this algorithm. And a bunch of these Hadamard matrices applied to a register, which is basically a circuit of qubits, is called the Hadamard transform. And that's the first part of the algorithm, commonly referred to as the initialization. What this basically does is put the quantum computer into an equal superposition of all the possible states of the register. So say you had a 8 qubit register, 2 to the 8, it would be 64 entries, so you'd have 128 superimposed states that correspond with each place that an entry could be in that database. Here is the actual code to do with this Hadamard transform. So basically I'm just setting a register length and then I'm iterating through that register and applying a Hadamard gate to each of the wires in the register. Next, we move on to the bulk of the algorithm. Uh, it's referred to as the Grover iteration. And the first part of the Grover iteration is the Oracle. And the Oracle is basically a black box function that modifies the entry you're looking for depending on its value. This basically means that if the item is in the correct state, then the oracle will rotate it, but otherwise it'll do nothing. This is referred to as a phase shift, and leaves the probabilities of the system the same, but the amplitude is negated. Next is the funky sounding diffusion transform. This part of the algorithm basically consists of a Hadamard transform, then a phase shift, then another Hadamard transform. The way that this state is isolated is through a lot of these transformations that take advantage of the difference in amplitude to single out that single state that you're looking for, increasing the probability of that state being measured. In the code, I'm again setting a length to the register, then applying an X gate, then the controlled Z gate, which is the phase shift, then another X gate. In function, the X gates do the same thing as the Hadamard gates in the circuit representation. So in code, it looks a little like this. I'm not going to go over all this code, but you can check out my article for more. In circuit form, this is what Grover's algorithm looks like. It's basically the Hadamard transform, then the Grover iteration, and then I iterate over that Grover iteration a bunch of times to isolate that blue value you see. This is a great and more intuitive visual that demonstrates the effects of Grover's algorithm on an amplitude after every operation. You can see what, you can see what the initialization does to all the entries in the database, followed by the orticle, followed by the amplification. And then you repeat that a bunch of times, singling out the probability. To bring it back to where we started, let me quickly reiterate on the applications of this algorithm. So it has the potential to break crypto systems, such as SHA-256, which Bitcoin is based on, Script, which is what Litecoin is based on, and also AES, 
which is where government, which is the encryption method that governments use to store their files. It can also search through unstructured databases significantly quicker than classical computers, which will be especially useful when the rise of IoT, the Internet of Things, becomes a real thing. With so many sensors bringing in data, it'll be hard to control it in a structured manner, and quantum computers will be able to find entries that you're looking for perfectly in an unstructured database. Today, we're still looking for more examples of speed up on quantum computers. While this is one of the only three ever demonstrated algorithms with an actual speed up on a quantum computer, the whole community is looking for more. I hope you're just as excited for the future of quantum computing as I am, but for now, we'll keep searching for more algorithms that have a speed up on quantum computers and keep raising gate fidelities and qubit numbers.